Leopard 2 tanks in Ukraine, will they cause an avalanche that will sweep away the Russian aggressor? Polish President Andrzej Duda said on Wednesday, December 11th that his country will supply Ukraine with one company of Leopard 2 tanks. The Polish Army's tank company consists of 14 vehicles. Warsaw has several upgraded Leopard 2 PL models at its disposal and about 230 older versions of the 2A4 and 2A5. But which of them will be received by the AFU and in what condition? The Polish side did not say. In this video, we'll try to understand how supplies of already purely NATO tanks can affect the course of the war in Ukraine. Ukraine is currently fighting with Soviet-made tanks, T-64, T-72 of various modifications, as well as captured T-80 and even T-90 Pori of tanks taken from the Russian army. In addition, Poland has supplied 200 T-72 tanks in its possession since the days of the Warsaw Pact, and Slovakia has supplied 28 T-55 tanks even older. Naturally, after 10 months of very intensive and brutal fighting, the number of tanks in the Ukrainian military had noticeably decreased. And there were practically no Soviet tanks left that could be purchased abroad. And you can't win a war on this scale without tanks. It's an axiom. That's why the turn came to purely NATO tanks. To understand how this equipment can affect the course of the war in Ukraine, let's look at what this beast is. The Leopard 2 tank. This is the main battle tank of the Bundeswehr, of the third post-war generation with a crew of four. The manufacturer is one of the giants of the German military industry concerned Krauss Mafie Wegmann GmbH. Many experts consider the Leopard 2 the best in the world because it has a perfect fire control system, an excellent gun, and solid armor, and despite its weight reaching 70 tons, can accelerate to 72 kilometers an hour and break in a few seconds. Being adopted by the FRG in 1979, it proved itself excellently and later began to be supplied to other countries. The Leopard 2 took over the tank market in Europe. It was not supplied only to England, Italy, and France, which had developed their main battle tanks. It's interesting that periodically the Leopard 2 was called the Euro Leopard, and after the spread outside of Europe, the Global Leopard. The tank began production in 1979. The first country to purchase these tanks from Germany was Denmark, which had refused the American M1 Abrams because of its high price. Later, in 1983, Switzerland became a buyer, and its example was followed by other countries. In 1990, production of the Leopard 2 ended. About 3,200 units were produced. But the tank itself is constantly receiving new modifications, the last of which is the Leopard 2A7 Plus which, as we said above, many experts consider the best main battle tank. But Ukraine will put, of course, not this version, but a much older, Leopard 2A4 at most, Leopard 2A5. So in this review, we'll consider them. The vehicle has a layout which became a classic for German tank building, with the rear-mounted engine, self-supporting turret in the center of the hull, and control units in the front of the tank. The Leopard 2 is equipped with Chobum combined armor, there are also mountings on the upper frontal plate for additional armor, and the sides are protected by multi-layer anti-shock shields that can be removed before transportation. The Leopard 2A4 has 640 mm of armor protection on the frontal plane of the hull, and starting from the Leopard 2A5 additional armor modules, protecting the tank's front were added, thanks to which the protection increased even more. The disadvantage of the German tank has always been weak underbody protection of only 20 to 60 millimeters. If the vehicle was blown up by mines, the driver had almost no chance of surviving. That's why the Leopard 2A4M and Leopard 2A6M had a superimposed armor plate mounted on the bottom of the tank. But whether the upgraded Leopard 2A4 will be delivered to the Ukrainian army is unknown. The turrets, protected by 860 millimeter thick composite armor on the right, and 660 mm on the left because the commander's EMES-1 observation unit is right in it. The side plates of the turret are 310 mm thick and are angled at 30 degrees. To the left of the driver, there are 27 rounds of first-round ammunition. In the rear of the turret, separated from the crew compartment by an armored wall, there's a compartment for another 15 rounds. It's provided with bouncing windows. 
In case of an ammunition detonation, the main energy of the shockwave escapes through them, giving the crew a good chance to escape. Compare this technical solution with Soviet tanks, in which the entire ammunition is located under the crew compartment. On the one hand, it's more difficult to hit it, but in the case of an explosion, the crew has no chance of salvation. And there are quite a few photos of Soviet tanks with their turrets torn off due to the explosion of ammunition. The Leopard 2 is equipped with a V12-cylinder, four-stroke, liquid-cooled MTUMB 873KA501 diesel engine. It has a power of 1,100 kilowatts, 1,500 horsepower, which allows the tank to speed up to 72 kilometers an hour on a highway. The drive system of the Leopard 2 tank is in the form of a one-piece engine block, which makes it possible to replace the transmission set using a recovery vehicle. Four hours are given for the replacement by the technical regulations. The main gun of the Leopard 2 tank is the 120mm smoothbore gun Rhine Metal version L44 for all modifications up to the A5 version. The gun is stabilized in two planes and able to fire different types of shells, including the German DM-33 Bops with Tracer, which pierce 560 millimeters of steel armor at a distance of 2,000 meters, and the German DM-12 multi-purpose shells. Additional armament includes two machine guns, one of which is paired with the main gun and the other is anti-aircraft. The German tank models are armed with two 7.62mm MG3 machine guns, the Danish version has two 7.62FN mag machine guns, and the Swiss model has 7.5mm MG87 machine guns. The Leopard 2 carries 4,750 rounds of machine gun ammunition. The standard German fire control system is the MS-15 with independent stabilization in two planes. The gunner's main sight is integrated with a Zeiss laser rangefinder and thermal imager. The gunner also has an 8-fold auxiliary periscope Faro Z18. The commander has an independent Rhine metal Zeiss Perry R17A2 periscope, which provides day and night visibility of targets to 3,600 meters. The fire control system provides three range readings to the target in four seconds. The data is transmitted to the fire control computer and used for decision making. Since the gunner's sight is integrated with the laser rangefinder, he can therefore see the results of the calculations directly in digital form. The rangefinder has a maximum range of 10,000 meters with an accuracy of 20 meters per 10 kilometers. This allows the Leopard 2 to destroy a moving target while on the move over rough terrain. In general, we can say that the technical characteristics of the Leopard 2A4 and A5 are not inferior to the most advanced versions of the Soviet T-72 and T-80 tanks, but they lose to the Russian T-90 Poryev tank, which Russia began to supply en masse to the war zone. So how can German Leopards affect the Ukrainian-Russian armed conflict? Of course, the 14 tanks that Poland's going to transfer in a war of this scale are nothing, but another thing is important here. For a long time, NATO countries did not dare to transfer their tanks to Ukraine. Firstly, a lot of questions about their maintenance and repair arise at once, as we know all Western equipment supplied to Ukraine is repaired in the West, and this problem is becoming more and more extensive. For example, already more than half of the delivered German PZH-2000 self-propelled artillery units are not in Ukraine, but in Latvia for repair. Secondly, Western experts fear that under the guidance of inexperienced Ukrainian tankers, NATO tanks will not show their full potential. And the pictures of burnt-out leopards in Ukraine will badly influence the image of this weapon. But if NATO has decided to supply tanks, it means that it thinks it'll be able to solve the problems with the repair, and it's not afraid of image losses. And in this case, the delivery of 14 tanks can cause an avalanche effect. The first batch will be followed by others. As a confirmation of these words, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba, announced that five countries are ready to deliver their leopards to Ukraine. According to Defense Express, apart from Poland, these are Finland, Germany, Sweden, and Spain. A total of 1,233 Leopard 2 tanks in various modifications and technical conditions are in service of these countries, including 389 of the A4 version. Additionally, the British newspaper The Independent quoted its sources as saying that British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak had decided to hand over a tank company of 12 Challenger 2s to Ukraine. Altogether, this is already an impressive force. Such an armored fist might, for example, allow the Ukrainian troops to organize an attack on Melitopol and Berdyansk to cut the Russian land corridor to the Crimea 
and reach the approaches to this peninsula. Such an offensive could prove to be a game-changer in this war, inspiring Ukrainians and their Western allies alike, resulting in even more massive arms shipments. Then it'd be a real sweeping avalanche. What do you think about supplies of Leopard 2 to Ukraine? Write about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss new stories about modern weaponry. See you next time.